So let's play basketball. What do you say? It's St. Leo and University of Tampa. The Spartans are 13-0 in the conference with a three-game lead over Eckerd and Florida Southern. They're both 10-3. and St. Leo is tied with Lynn and Florida Tech at 6-7, and seven, tied for fifth in the conference. They would love to get some wins here and get up into the fourth spot so that they could host a first-round game in the SSC tournament. Well, the last time these two teams played, both the women and the men's games, up at St. Leo, uh, just around the Christmas break time, both games went into overtime, so I think... Even though there's a separation in the standings right now, St. Leo is a team to watch out for and will give the Spartans everything they can handle. Well, Shayla Wright Ponder had a great game up at St. Leo. She absolutely did more on that in a minute. The starting lineup, Amanda Ulrich, the true freshman from Secaucus, New Jersey. She is averaging a team high 14 and a half points, 2.9 assists, almost five rebounds a game, and she launches a lot of three balls. Shoots 32% from deep. She's a good one. Also in the starting lineup, Casey O'Shaughnessy, another true freshman, 5'7" out of Brooklyn, New York, averages seven and a half points a game. Third starter, Alex Button, number 22. She is the leading three-point shooter on the team. 47% from beyond the arc, 41 of 87 overall from Cohocton, New York. She's a sophomore, 5'10", averaging 13 and a half points a game. Also in the lineup, Alani Gallagher. Gallagher, number 23. She is the reigning defensive player of the week in the Sunshine State Conference. Leads the team in uh, block shots and rebounds. Has six double-doubles this year. Gina Briarly, number 33, is a 5'7", senior guard out of Manchester, England, averages 8.6 points a game. The head coach, Anthony Crescetto, his fourth year at St. Leo, a record of 42 and 63. Assistants, Tish Johnson and Sabrina Whiting, who grew up in Tampa and went to St. Leo camp as a kid. <laughs> Starting lineup for Tampa, number two, Aliyah Abney. She has been off the bench all but the last game and then this one. She starts today. She's been playing very well lately. The redshirt junior out of Orlando, 5'9", redshirt junior guard. Julia Ingram, number three, is a 5'9", junior out of Palm Harbor University High School clear in Clearwater. Uh, Julia Ingram is averaging 6.7 points a game. This is her 20 straight start this season. Chris Nelson is the point guard, leading the team in assists and steals. She's a 5-4 uh, guard from Augusta, Georgia, the only senior on the team, and she is one of the co-captains, along with the aforementioned uh, Dory Nudge, who is not starting tonight for just the second time this season. LaShayla Wright-Ponder, Six-foot Richard Jr. transfer from Bloomington, Minnesota, averaging 14 points a game, is the power forward, or most likely the post. And Malia Sullivan, number 24, again, the reigning player of the week offensively, had a huge game, 29 points Saturday at Rollins. Head coach, of course, Tom Jesse, and he's assisted by associate head coach Caitlin Mitrick and Bell Bistro, the graduate assistant. Tip goes to St. Leo, and they'll have the first opportunity to score here today. Working the ball, trying to get it inside. They do to Gallagher. Gallagher working on right ponder, puts it up a little too hard, and here comes Aliyah Abney with the rebound. She'll take it coast to coast. She goes all the way to the basket, puts it up, and scores. 2 nothing Spartans. Tom Jesse said, well, we've known she's one of the more athletic players, but he said she will do two or three really, really good things during the course of the game. Just got to make sure she doesn't do two head scratchers. <laughs> She is a creative player, for sure, when the ball is in her hands. Again, they go to Gallagher, who will try to work on right ponder, and she launches a 16-footer. No, Abney with a rebound once again. Right ponder with a couple good trips down the floor did not fall for any of the fakes from O'Shaughnessy. And because Gallagher, I should say. And again, with Nudge on the bench, possibly not playing today, they do not want right ponder to get in foul trouble. Still 10 seconds on the shot clock. This is Ingram. Comes off the pick. Throws it cross court. Very dangerous. It's tipped off the hands of Chris Nelson and out of bounds. She wouldn't have been able to do much with it anyway. Nope. The shot clock was down to three. First turnover of the game. The first meeting you mentioned, Tampa won in overtime, 72-66. Right ponder, 32 points, was 13 of 17 from the floor. After St. Leo got the first field goal of overtime, Tampa scored the next eight over the next two and a half minutes. Kind of like the overtime game we called against Ecker the other night when they gave up the first points and then scored 10 in a row. Another good job by right ponder, not going up, just keeping her body, put her hands up. Ball shot too hard. There you go, inside. A nice, strong move inside right there by Malia Sullivan. 
another thing Tom Jesse told us with Malia Sullivan, he said she might be better off at a four down low. And he said, I don't care where you want to play. I don't ask you if you're a three or four or two or whatever. He said, who do you want to guard? Oh, you want to guard her? You're a four. Yeah. <laughs> and that is what she's doing tonight. And she's really a very, very strong player. She started, well, played a lot of games, maybe had a few starts along the way last season as a true freshman. A little wheeling and dealing. A three-point shot by Ulrich is no good. Amanda Ulrich had a career-high 30 points against Alabama Huntsville early in the season. Also had a career-high 10 rebounds, her only double-double of the season and of her career thus far. Abney inside the right, Ponder takes it up. A little left hook. Nice. Ooh. A lot of rim that time, but it finally rolls down, and it's six to nothing. Spartans leading St. Leo. Right ponder not afraid to take the move inside. Ulrich, who will have the ball in her hands about 80% of the times, according to Coach Crescito. Does a lot of creating on offense. Alex Button gives it up. Briarly gets it inside. Gallagher with the left hand off the glass and down. St. Leo, the Lions on the board now. It's 6-2 Tampa. She got it a lot deeper that time than she had the previous time, so had a little easier entry into the basket. Gallagher 6-1, right ponder 6 foot, so she even has an inch advantage there. There's the cutter, and they're no. going to call a blocking good foul call. on Gallagher, who had a good idea, just didn't quite get there. Gallagher, six double-doubles this season, including last game at Nova Southeastern. She's had eight games in which she's had double-figure rebounds. Ah. Off the hands of Sullivan, out of bounds. Second turnover for Tampa. Ulrich initiates the offense. Briarly was thinking about a three. Instead, takes it to the rack and kicks out. Ulrich to the basket over Nelson. Around and out. Sullivan the rebound. Lobbing it into right ponder. Little jump hand, left hand hook, no good. Gallagher pulls down the board. In their first meeting, Gallagher had 17 points, six boards, and three steals. Nice shot right there on the baseline by Alex Button. Averages 13 and a half points, five and a half rebounds a game. Had a career high, 29 points at again the game against Florida Southern. She made six of ten from beyond the arc in that game. Aliyah Abney to the rack. Nice drive. Came back to her right hand, which could have caused some problems. Yeah, the being defender. almost too far under the basket. But she got it up and in. It's 8-4. Abney, the leading scorer with four. Briarly hands to Button. They go inside to Gallagher. Gallagher shot off the rim, and here comes Abney pushing it ahead to Nelson. Nelson has added the three-point shot to her arsenal. She shoots 39% from beyond the arc, and that has become a true weapon. Here's Ingram. She's the three-point shooter extraordinaire on the team. Right ponder, triple team, put it up, no good. Good defense that time by Gallagher for St. Leo. Briarly kicks it out and is going to be called for a whistle. Got a little, travel. little skip through the lane there. And we are under five minutes, so we'll have our first timeout. Four and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. It is Tampa 8, St. Leo 4. The Spartans are four of six from the field, and the Lions are two of eight from the floor. Tampa with a 6-2 rebound advantage. Tampa's turned it over twice. The Lions have turned it over once. Tampa, as we said, going for a school record 15th consecutive win. And I know Tom Jesse's of a mindset that you're playing well, you want to keep playing up there, but we've, he said we've been on, on the top at the peak of our game for a long time. You hope that they don't start looking at each other going, boy, we've been up here a yeah. long time wow. playing so well. 
You just want to keep playing well. You don't want anything to change. And he said you don't want to lose, but he also said that isn't a terrible thing. Okay. If you're going to have trouble with the pressure. Sure. Uh, obviously, it's a good thing that they... Spartans have a three-game advantage over Eckerd and Florida Southern in the standings. They're both 10-3 and three in Tampa, 13-0. and 0. That win over Eckerd was big last Wednesday. Yep. A game that Tampa trailed almost the whole way. Most of it. Yeah. Both games against Eckerd this year were Tampa having double-digit deficits. In the third quarter. It, yeah, in yeah. the second half and came back and won both of them. Dory Nudge in the game. Well, going to try it out, I guess. For right ponder. Sullivan hands to Ingram. They're switching on defense, the man to man. Here's a nice move by Abney, but no good. Nudge got the rebound and kicks it out to her teammate, Ingram. Shot clock resets at 20. 4.05 left here in the first quarter. Tampa with a four point lead. Nelson, Sullivan. Sullivan, 17-footer nice. straight away is good. She's got four points now, and Tampa with its largest lead of six. Scott Lynn, Jack Ike with you here on a what's been a beautiful day in Tampa. Close to 80. We've been going through some Florida cold here for yeah. about a week. Yeah, it got down into the 50s and, and even down into the 40s in some in locations some areas, in the Tampa yeah. Bay area. Double, Double dribble. dribble. Double dribble is called. On O'Shaughnessy. With two true freshman guards, O'Shaughnessy and Ulrich, it took a little while for the Lions just to get acclimated to the season. But uh, once they got some experience under their belt, those two freshmen are playing very well now. And the Lions are winning as a result. <laughs> Abney, are you kidding? <laughs> She said, I'd better she... shoot before my foot comes down yeah, there. Exactly. How did I not travel on that one, she's thinking. She did not. I think some people in green were asking the same question. I think so. She's three of four from the floor. Three rebounds and six points. That shot is wide to the right by O'Shaughnessy. And here comes Sullivan. You can see she can handle the ball very well. A little crossover falling to her left. Tough shot. A little bit of a heat check right there just yeah. to see if yep. and now another travel is on O'Shaughnessy and here comes right ponder back into nudge I, I I gotta think that Tom Jesse was just wanting to see a little test how she could play it doesn't hurt anything except her per game average in statistics yes. if she doesn't now come that back she's and played play a game yeah but she's going right to the bike and yeah. going to keep that leg warm by riding she was sitting on it the entire time before she came in. Lobbed inside, and that's a turnover. Sullivan tried to lob it. A little high-low entry pass. Good anticipation by the Lions defensively. An eight-point lead is Tampa's largest. There's the shot by Briarly. No good. Three-pointer miss, and right ponder pulls it down. St. Leo has three turnovers the last three and a half minutes and has not scored during that time. Sullivan to the basket strong a little too hard and there for the defensive board was Gallagher she's not shy she'll get in there and bang with the best of them drive no good here comes the Spartans Abney ahead to Nelson Nelson will hold wait for a teammate and threw it good save there by Abney Good anticipation also by Ingram to come up and meet the pass, knowing that it was either over and back or it was going to be a tremendous save. Abney for three from the corner. It's a little, a little long. Hit iron about two or three times. 115 left in the quarter. St. Leo, two of 11 from the field. Ulrich backs out, now creating. Step back three is Ooh, good. Rattled that one home. She shoots the three more than anybody. She's a 32% shooter, so not bad. Not the best on this team by far, but that's her 32nd make of the year. She used the pick really well there and then just stepped back and hit it. 12 to 7. Nelson 
Tried to get it to right ponder cutting across, but good defense that time by Abby Zaitsev, who's checked into the game. And in transition, Ulrich scores to make it a three-point game. Nice little run. It's a five-point run for St. Leo here as we're down to the final 20-some seconds of the quarter. Zaitsev, number 21, is a 5'8 sophomore guard from South Lake, Texas. Shot clock is off, and Nelson will let it get down to about seven or eight and then initiate the offense. Here's Sullivan. The switch on defense. Gallagher has her. Tough shot from the left, el left elbow and no good. And here, with not enough time to get it to the other end, was Briarly with the board. And we've reached the end of the first quarter. A 5-0 run to end the period brings the Lions back within three. It is Tampa 12, St. Leo 9 on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Well, you look at the statistics for this game. St. Leo comes in, even though they are below 500 in the conference at 6-7. and seven. They lead the conference in scoring at 72-plus points a game. Tampa does not. Tampa's middle of the pack, though, but where Tampa excels is scoring margin. Oh, yeah. They're about 66 points a game, but they only give up about 55. So they don't need to score a lot because you're not going to get a lot against them. Right. Pretty good on defense, that's for sure. A couple other things to look at for the Spartans that are interesting. They're ranked first in the nation, fewest fouls committed overall. And, gee, they don't have any fouls committed in the first quarter. Um, they are ranked second in the nation in field goal percentage, shooting 49.9. And they rank third in D2 in committing the fewest personal fouls per game, only 11.8. Well, and even though they missed a few shots late in the first quarter, they shoot 46% from the floor in the period as St. Leo bounced back from a disastrous start to shoot 31% in the first quarter. 4 of 13, 1 of 4 from deep. Tampa's missed its only three-point try, that from Abney. And again, 6 of 13 shooting from the floor. Tampa with a 10-6 rebound advantage. Tampa four turnovers in the first quarter and three turnovers. For St. Leo. Aliyah Abney will inbound as soon as the Lions meet them on the court. Scott Lynn and Jack Ike with you here. We have all the Tampa home games for you on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network, TampaSpartans.tv. Aliyah Abney, the top scorer in the game thus far with six points, three of five from the floor to go with four rebounds and an assist. Ulrich with five points. Leads the Lions after one. Nelson to the basket. Scoop with the left hand a little strong. And the rebound by Gallagher. She is really working the boards hard. That's her fifth rebound already. Ulrich thought about a three. Gives it instead to Montia Moon, who's in the game now. Moon, 5'5", five five junior guard from Baldwin, New York. Lob it to Gallagher and <laughs> just a little... Unintentional <laughs> yep. body check right there by Sullivan. First foul of the game is whistled here. It's been pretty clean. I have a feeling that was a point of emphasis is that we just cannot get into it too much foul trouble. We don't foul a lot, but we can't make silly ones and put ourselves because we're not going to go that deep. Ball knocked away. Sullivan got a hand on it. Abney pushes back to Sullivan to the basket. She goes. She's and fouled and she scores. And it will be an opportunity for a three-point play. The officials, Tasha Smith, Greg Metzger, and Tony Brackens. And as we said, it's been a pretty clean game thus far. Excellent body control by Sullivan there. Just one foul for each team now. She's got six points. Going the other way, Ulrich lets her teammates get to their spots. A double high pick. Ulrich steps back for three and hits another one. Straight away, she has hit a couple now. Ulrich with 100 three-point tries on the year. Two of three in this game. Now she's up to 33%. Ponder missed the shot, got her own rebound. Puts it up with the right hand this time, no good. Now again with the right hand, the third time's the charm. Trying to get that double-double out of the way early. <laughs> yeah, she has a shot at it by halftime. 16-12. Right Ponder with four points and five rebounds. Moon. 
Guarded by Abney. Gives it up to Zeit. Might have got away with walk. Inside it goes to Gallagher. Puts it up. A little strong. Got her own rebound. And puts it up over right ponder. And she's fouled by the six-foot redshirt junior. Playing in her first season at Tampa. LaShayla La Wright Ponder after playing two years at Hampton, Hampton University. And uh, also attended the University of South Dakota as a freshman. She did not play. She redshirted that year. Now to the line is Gallagher. She gets to the line more than any other player. Almost twice as many free throw attempts and makes as almost all of her teammates. Huh. She was 82 of 143 from the free throw line coming into the game. Dory Nudge, 91 of 121. So you can see that if she's getting to the line over the course of the season 20 more times than Dory Nudge, who gets to the line a ton. Oh. And there's an offensive rebound, and Ulrich puts it back in. And it's a 16-15 game. The Lions fell behind early, trailed by as many as eight at 12 to four. Driving and trying to dish off was Nelson. That's a turnover. That's twice Nelson's tried to thread the needle. Hasn't gotten it even close. This is Moon. Shaking it to the elbow and getting it to Gallagher. They're going to go to work on right ponder. Now it's back to Moon. Moon with a crossover. Kicks far side. Briarly. She's a lefty. Kicks it out. And here's Gallagher. Seven to shoot. On top. A quick shot there. A little long. I think Ulrich thought the shot clock was going to expire. She still had about five seconds, I think. Oh. Ingram to the basket. Nice. Julia Ingram. That's good to see. She Because she's your outside shooter. If she can get him thinking, hey, she might drive on me. They may back off and give her that outside shot. She had a nice game last week at Rollins, 14 points. About 37% from beyond the arc. Has made 24 from downtown. Here's Moon. A three would tie it here. Moon doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but she is. She heard you and said, all right, we'll see what we well, can do. Well, she made four of seven before that, so that's better than 50%. Yeah. Why not, she thought. Abney and Sullivan, two who can really create with that nice. ball. Woo. They are really good drivers, good ball handlers. They can come off the dribble and even shoot, but they can really get to the rack, and they did it strong right there as a team. Five-point lead for Tampa with 6.15 to play in the first half. Ulrich all the way to the basket. Right ponder with some good pressure. Got the rebound as well. Sixth board of the game. Nice entry pass, but the shot missed by Sullivan. Lucky not to get a whistle blown as she might have fouled on the other end. And a foul, Abney will send Moon to the line. We see Button coming back into the game, number 22, I think for Zaitsa. And at the scorer's table, waiting to come in is O'Shaughnessy. She'll come back in for Moon, so it will be the five starters back on the floor. For both teams, once she enters after the free throw attempt, oh, I take that back. We're going to have yet another substitution. Number 15, Tamara Shash, a 6'1 sophomore from Egypt, will come into the game as well on a make. In for Moon. And for Briarly. One point game. Tom Jesse said this will not be easy. This is going to be one of our toughest tests in the upcoming schedule. They're all tough, but all right. he really likes this team. He says they're playing a lot better now. Kicked out for Nelson. Catch and shoot three off the iron. Right ponder had the rebound and is fouled. I don't think in the act of shooting. Nope, Tampa will have it under the basket. Just the second team foul of the quarter. You know, we were talking to Anthony Crescito earlier in the game, or before the game started, and he said, this is a really, really tough conference any given night. He said, I've coached in the Northeast. This is by far tougher. 
Nice ball movement. Nelson had an open three, but didn't take it this time. Ten seconds to shoot. They set it up. Sullivan, free throw line jumper around and out. Rebound grabbed by Button. They go the other way. Look out. Here's Ulrich. She'll stop and pop for two. Iron, no. Abney the rebound. Anthony Crisito, by the way, says, hey, give a shout out oh, that's right. to 86-year-old William Crisito, Korean war vet. Listening, watching. I guess he watches all the games yeah. here on the SSE digital network. Nice to have you watching, William. And one. The and one opportunity here for Tampa. Chance to make it a six-point advantage once again. But it'll come after this timeout. 4.52 left. In this first half, it's 22 to 17. Hmm, sounds like Deep Purple's about to begin the concert. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that was smoke on the water starting uh, It sounded up there. like it. Yeah. I, I, really I was waiting it. for the, the, dun, the dun, haze. Dun, 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 dun. Waiting for the haze to come up off the stage. No, they are still tuning up. <laughs> Twenty-two seventeen is the score. Sullivan has been strong. I believe she's at the ten-point mark. Are waiting for our stats monitors to be updated. I believe you're right. Dory Nudge made a token appearance a little while ago. We'll see if she comes back in. And again, it may depend on. Obviously, number one, how she feels, and number two, the necessity of yep. her. And, and you don't know what the report was when she came off. She didn't appear to be laboring in any way, but when she came off, she did talk to Coach Jesse for a few seconds, went back to the bike. You don't know if she said just nonchalantly can't do it uh -huh. or whenever you need me. Yeah, I think she's probably just staying loose at this point. It, it's such a key loss, as you say. She's obviously up for Sunshine State Conference Player of the Year. She was first team all SSC a year ago and the newcomer of the year in the conference last season. Well, and right now she's second in scoring and first in rebounding. So that's a valuable person. And, and a team you're leader. talking overall in the conference. Yes. Right? Yeah. She leads the team in scoring, but yeah, second in the conference. And double double. Yeah. Averaging a double double. And, she, and the ball is in her hands quite often. Yeah. At the end of a game, Briarly on the drive, a little too strong. Yeah. She can break the press if you need her to. Yeah. And we've seen that. If it's close and they're full court pressure, Dory Nudge will often come back and bring the ball up the floor. So if this is a close game, we'll see if she comes back in at that point, too. Abney kept the ball instead of handing off. Shoots a 17-footer left side, no good. Rebound hauled in by Gallagher. Gallagher has eight boards already, so does Wright Ponder. Just lost that one. And here in transition, Sullivan ahead of the pack, lays it up and in. And that equals the largest lead for the Spartans, eight points with 3.50 to play here in the half. Little breathing room, but it was 12-4. Kind of run, cut it down, and it was close, but the Spartans back to eight. Briarly for three. No long rebound, though into the hands of Ulrich. She drives, throws it up a little strong. And Malia Sullivan gives it up to Chris Nelson. Here we go. We're on the run here. Abney pump fake, drives. No good. Right ponder. Had it on her hands. Couldn't haul it in, though. And another rebound for Gallagher. Her ninth. <laughs> her career high rebounds is 14. So she's on pace to set that by the third quarter. Well, right ponder's right with her. She has eight. I know. Nice left hand move right there by Shash. Not a physically strong person, but that was a very athletic move. Only averages a point a game and uh, only about five and a, oh, not less than six minutes a game. So she doesn't get a lot of playing time, but she has the height as Sullivan shoots over that outstretched arm that time to make it again an eight point game. But Shash, 6 1, a sophomore. Her career high point scorer is eight. She did that last season against Trinity College. So not a huge offensive player. But she does have some length. 
Riley brings it out, nine to shoot. Here's Gallagher working on right ponder, puts it up too, too hard. Came back with a right hand, a little strong, and Abney with another rebound. What a half she's having. Six points and six rebounds. Sullivan gives Ingram, kicks it out. Abney, good ball movement. Nelson open three straight away. Oh. Boy, that was to perfection and an 11 point Tampa lead. It's another one of those hockey assists that Ingram didn't get, <laughs> but her initial pass set that all in motion. The spacing, the ball movement was terrific that time for Tampa. As a result, the Spartans lead by 11 with 135 left here in the quarter and up with a nice move is Gallagher. She's got five points to go with her nine rebounds. Sullivan, by the way, with 15, the game's top scorer. Well, she's halfway to setting a new career high. Yeah. yeah. But One, she's doing everything in the, the motion of the game. Oh, absolutely. But, but she's feeling like nobody can stop her right. defensively, I think. It, and right Ponder with the offensive rebound and score. <laughs> That's her ninth rebound to go with six points now. Sullivan coming off that 29-point game at Rollins on Saturday, her career high. She'd had a 25-point game against Rollins in February of last year. And there is a hard foul by Sullivan. And to the line will go Amanda Ulrich. Coach Jesse signaled for Dory Nudge to come in. She hopped off the bike. I think maybe... Well, it's going to be Sullivan. It was going to be right ponder. She was starting to leave the floor, yeah. and then with this, with the foul second picked up foul. by Sullivan, yeah, her second. With a minute to go, just set her down, get the half. So this would be closer to the starting lineup anyway, with the twin towers of Tampa both in there, as Ulrich misses the free throw. 75% free throw shooter on the season. Second one is good. Ulrich now with 11 points to lead St. Leo. Ulrich is going to get to sit down for a moment. Moon is back in. If Tampa shoots quickly, they'll get the ball back for a final shot. A nudge with good post position inside. Gets her first points. Only played a couple of minutes here. It's a 12-point lead, the largest for Tampa. A three-point shot. High archer, no good that time by Lenise Santiago, true freshman out of Tampa Catholic High School. Final shot time. Shot clock is off. Nelson will dribble it down to about 10 seconds and then start the weave or give it to... Or launch a three. At Abney to the basket. Scoops. Oh. Reverse, no good. Gallagher's 10th rebound. It'll count if it goes. Oh. And it was close. <laughs> good look. Did not go. And we've reached halftime here in Tampa at the Bob Martinez Athletic Center. Scott Lynn and Jack Ike bringing you the call here on the SSC Digital Network. It is Tampa 34, St. Leo 22. And I'm going to step aside as uh, Jack Ike will be interviewing associate men, head men's basketball coach Justin Pekka and a little preview of tonight's game which will come up about a half hour at the conclusion of this game. I'll get through all the scoring leaders in just a few minutes. Uh, Jack, why don't you take it and yep. talk with Justin. Here is associate head coach Justin Pekka. And Coach Pekka is here joining us, and we're glad to see you can join us. I know last week yeah. your goal was to coach, but stay as far not away close. from people as you could. Yeah, I finally got over that cold. It's been about three months. Man, it's yeah. not the... Uh, you too. I know. But yours was yours came back, though, it sounds Yeah, like. mine came back a little bit. Uh, I'm okay you, now. You sound better. Yeah, All right. feel much better. You don't really need to wear the mask anymore? No, no mask. All right. No coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Coming up now, you've got uh, St. Leo coming up at about 7.30. Right now, you're still in last place in the conference. St. Leo ahead of you. You're not going to catch them, but you've got a chance to move up on a couple people yeah. in the conference. And uh, you look at the, you want to be in the top eight. You've got Lynn two games ahead, Rollins two games ahead, Florida Tech just a game ahead. So you could, and with five home games to go, you could do some climbing here. We need to, yeah. Every game is critical at this point. We've dug ourselves quite a hole. 
Um, but luckily, yeah, we're at home five out of the next seven. So uh, trying to put together some wins here before it's over. All gotta right. Get to, got to get to probably eight wins, we think. Yeah. Usually, I ask you, what's the injury report? So I guess I should. And usually yeah. you've got somebody who's uh, limping around. What's uh, the status today? Let's see. We got Brendan <laughs> Baker back for practice the last okay. couple of days. Will he dress? He's going to dress. Not sure if he's going to get in there or not. But okay. uh, Derek Felder is still bad on injuries, but he's going to play. And okay. Brent Duncan's also back. Uh, he's been looking pretty good in practice. So, All right. You've got one of the top scorers in the conference in Pat Bacon, but also they will be sending one of the top scorers in the conference against you, and that is McClure. McClure, Hyran McClure, yeah. averaging about 21 points yeah. a game too. He can really score. Him and uh, Bacon have had some battles, and he's gotten the best of them, I think. Will they go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? Uh, they will at some point. At yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe not to start, but at some point they'll go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and McClure's I think he's leading the league in free throw percentage. He's the best free throw shooter. Uh, he can really shoot. And over 40% on threes. Yeah, he can really shoot. He's a scorer for sure. They have a couple guys that can really score. Uh, so we'll try to slow them down a little bit. You played up there over the holidays, went into overtime. You eventually lost the ball game. But what is, what's different about your team now compared to when you played up there? Other than I think uh, mostly the injuries are different. Yeah, that was KG's first game, I yes. believe. So he's... Uh, in better shape he's in the swing of things understand things better um and just having guys in and out of the lineup you know has been kind of difficult but now we've had a few games here where they're back and they're everyone's kind of getting on the same page how about the uh, the progress of kadeem guy uh, your seven foot center uh, is he getting more comfortable with the offense and the so. defense and are the players getting more comfortable with what he yeah. can do yeah i think so he like he didn't play uh, an organized game for about a year and a half because of his transfer rules. So it took a little time for him to get used to the speed and everything. It's different than practice. Um, but he's coming along, and he he's pretty smart. He understands what we're trying to do. And uh, obviously he's huge. He's big. He makes, yeah. a, makes a difference defensively. And um, so, yeah, he's been, he's been slowly getting better, and uh, it's good to see his improvement. And back-to-back -back home games, that's got to be a nice feeling as well. Yeah, finally. I feel like we've been on the road forever. You've been road warriors, so yeah. there's no doubt about yeah. that. Well, I don't think we won a game on the road, to be honest. It's, we're 0-9. Uh, 0-9, oh, we're struggling. So we, we've been shooting the ball well at home, and we need to really uh, capitalize on that. Well, coach, we're going to let you ups here. Let you get back. I know All you right. got uh, some preparation to do. And uh, yeah. uh, 7.30, we'll have the call of the game. Thank you. All right, Justin Peck, our associate head coach. Spartans men team getting ready to take on St. Leo at about 7.30.
nations with split second acceleration uh -huh. in a capsule of time to witness your bone evaporation slash paragraphs to emphasize my emphasis abbreviate lyricists the lyrical shorthand is i kidnap plans for atmospherical advantage my lyrical damage derives from mental mechanics with the mic in hand i'm immortal to you man's my diaphragm allows me to kill a whole clan verse for verse you'll get your verse reverse battle rhyme since fair and midair and change course i've been held captive for scientific attractions nuclear rays made my brain radioactive knock the world off its axis redesign the atlas reconstruct the globe with chi saw geographics rhythmical mathematics calculated you to average well, well, more l's than uh, 90 uh, degree uh, angles on uh, graphics hey, yo, you rap cats better sit back and relax we getting stashed while the rest of you cats get in attack by the three of us y'all mad you want to be with us even players from 2020 they ain't seeing no, us <laughs> Welcome to the University of Tampa. My name is Tucker Whitman and I'm a junior marketing major here at UT. Today we're going to look at some of the highlights of our beautiful Riverside campus here in downtown Tampa. We'll start at Plant Hall. This historic building was opened in 1891 as the Tampa Bay Hotel and now serves as the main academic building here at UT. There's four floors of classrooms as well as faculty and administrative offices. Next up, the Vaughn Center, the hub of campus life and activities. This multi-purpose building includes the campus bookstore, our primary cafeteria plus an additional food court, a theater, as well as offices and meeting rooms for student organizations. The Vaughn Center is also one of UT's residence halls, providing five floors of student rooms. Morsani Hall is another residence hall here at UT. In addition to housing approximately 450 students, this building offers another selection of eateries as well as a small grocery store. Now let's check out the Sykes College of Business. This academic building houses classrooms and faculty offices for UT's undergrad and graduate business students. This building also has a real-time stock trading room. Right next door is the Sykes Chapel for Faith and Values. This gorgeous interfaith chapel features a large main hall complete with a massive pipe organ, as well as meditation rooms and meeting rooms. Student healthcare is a major priority for us here at UT. The Dickey Health and Wellness Center is accessible to all students and provides high quality services including basic medical care, counseling, and wellness programs. On the east side of campus, you'll find the McDonald Kelsey Library. Here, students can learn from a large collection of books, periodicals, and digital databases. They can also take advantage of our numerous study rooms and computers. The Academic Success Center is another great resource for students. This is your one-stop shop for academic advising, coaching, and tutoring services. Whether you're a seasoned athlete or just want to shoot some hoops, the athletic facilities here at UT are hard to beat. The Bob Martinez Athletic Center includes a large gymnasium, a weight room, and training facilities. In addition, the campus features an aquatic center open year-round, six tennis courts, baseball and softball fields, a 1,500-seat stadium, as well as a lacrosse field and intramural complex. Need a break from studying? Head to Falls Theater and catch a play. This 1,000-seat historic theater serves as a home for all major performances made by UT's Department of Speech, Theater and Dance, as well as special guests. This is one of UT's newest facilities, the Innovation and Collaboration Building. Here you will find UT's very own Starbucks. In addition, classrooms, cybersecurity labs, study lounges, and the Los Entrepreneurship Center, designed for student entrepreneurs to launch their startups. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video tour of UT, we'd love to give you one in person. For more information or to schedule a campus visit, go to ut.edu. In 1889, St. Leo is the fourth largest Catholic university in the United States and currently serves more than 14,000 students. They study at its university campus in Greater Tampa Bay through its online programs and at more than 40 teaching locations in seven states, boasting small class sizes, academic excellence, and state-of-the-art technology. St. Leo is a thriving community you definitely want to be a part of.
just a couple of minutes away from the start of the second half here in Tampa at the Bob Martinez Athletic Center. Scott Lynn along with Jack Ike bringing you this game between the undefeated in conference Sunshine State Conference leaders, the Spartans of the University of Tampa and the St. Leo Lions, winners of four of their last six, currently tied for fifth in the SSC with Lynn and Florida Tech. Leading scores in the first half, first four visiting St. Leo, 11 points for Amanda Ulrich. She's 4 of 11 from the floor and hit 2 of 4 from beyond the arc. 5 points and 10 rebounds for Alani Gallagher. I mentioned earlier her career high rebounds is 14 set at Nova Southeastern when she had a 19 points as well. So that was her sixth double-double of the season in that last game at Nova Southeastern. She's she is a tough one, and it, obviously she and Wright Ponder have had quite a battle inside. Wright Ponder of Tampa, six points and nine rebounds in 18 minutes. The leading scorer is Malia Sullivan, who has 15 points in 19 minutes of court action, seven of 13 from the floor, five rebounds, also one steal. And keep the eye on Aliyah Abney, triple-double watch, has six rebounds, six points, and four assists in the first 20 minutes of this game. Dory Nudge came off the bench for the first time this season as she can try, tries to rehab that uh, lower body injury and see if she can get out there and be proficient at her game. Only played three minutes in the first half, hit her only field goal attempt and did have one rebound. Also Ingram, two points, one rebound, one steal, and Nelson with three points and one assist in the first half. Tampa. Shoots 50% in the second quarter, shooting 49% overall for the game. One of three from downtown. St. Leo is two of eight from beyond the arc. Shot 31% in the first quarter, but just four of 14, 29% in the second quarter, shooting just a few percentage points under 30% for the game thus far. A 22-12 second quarter has given Tampa the 34-22 lead as we begin play here in the third. Scott and Jack with you. And Amanda Ulrich will initiate the offense defended by Chris Nelson. I suspect they'll go right back to Gallagher. And they do. Kicks out to Ulrich. Nice little two-man game there. Driving and lobbing inside to Gallagher. Abney comes away with a steal. Good idea that time, just didn't connect. Gallagher went high to get it, couldn't corral it. Driving all the way to the basket was Abney, missed the shot. Briarly, the senior, a four-year starter, goes into the corner and the three launched there, no good by O'Shaughnessy. Sullivan, big first half with 15 points. They begin the weave. Ingram thought about a three. Gives it to Sullivan, who drives and scores. Nice. She's so strong. A great with the touch, ball. yeah. Body control, everything. And she had no idea, or no doubt in her mind, I should say, that she was going to take it strong to the rack as soon as she got the ball that time. Largest lead of the game, 14 right now. St. Leo has never led in the game. Ulrich gives it out to Button. Inside to Gallagher. Puts it up strong. And she scores. I thought there might have been a whistle coming too because Wright Ponder, I thought, had a little contact there. But the officials are letting them play tonight. I think they've done a really nice job. Yep. Not overly physical. And I think there's a little stumble. Going to call the foul before the travel. Yep. That's why she traveled. Yeah. O'Shaughnessy picking up the personal foul. That's her third personal foul. First player in the game with three. Only Sullivan with two. Nobody else has more than one. Boy, teams have really scouted, and they know Julia Ingram. <laughs> Julia Ingram can shoot the three, and everybody knows it. Abney with a nice crossover drive, no good. Right Ponder got the rebound, but then lost the ball into the hands of Ulrich. Here come the Lions in a hurry. Ulrich all the way to the basket. No good, but a good rebound by Briarly. And the score is a result. Good effort there by the Lions, and they pull back within 10. 36-26, 7.39 to play in the third. 
Basket by O'Shaughnessy is her first bucket. She's on the board now. Right Ponder gets triple teams, lost the handle. Here's Ulrich. Bounce pass to uh, Button up and in. Well run fast break there. And a little bit of a run here. 6-0 run for the Lions. 14 Tom, points down to eight. Tom Jesse says just run the offense now. Just run it. Held up his arm. I thought he might call timeout. He didn't. Now coming off the pick. Left elbow jumper is wide to the right. And a rebound by Gallagher. Her 12th board of the game. Ulrich. Crossover. Nice. Puts it up. And no good. But she's fouled. Almost a three-point play. And I guarantee you would have seen the timeout called had that gone in. 6.49 left here in the third quarter. And what was a 14-point lead is down to eight and could be cut even further. And it has been. Tampa hasn't scored the last two minutes and 15 seconds. A 7-0 scoring run right now for the Lions. Ulrich got them both. Coach Grissetto told us before the game that she's been making better decisions as the season has gone along, but he said, you know, transitioning from high school ball to college basketball is tough. It's a long, long season, and the conference schedule is so hard as Abney drives to the basket for a bucket. She's got eight. Just gave a little head fake to the right, and the left just opened up. Ulrich getting some instruction from Coach Crisito in his fourth year at St. Leo. He was previously at New York Institute of Technology. He had been there from 2009 to 2016. No good. Abney another rebound. Nelson. Going to bring it out a little bit. I think they, while well, they changed the set, I thought they were going to look at a zone perhaps, but no, it's still man to man. And now the pass by Abney is intercepted. Good length by Button. 5 10 guard went up to steal it. Puts it up a little strong. A nice rebound by Briarly. She gets about five boards a game. Ulrich for three. No good. And Abney scoots to the corner to get the board. Right Ponder has 10 rebounds, six points, and now Abney with eight points and eight rebounds. 38-30. Nelson to the basket. The ball is... I thought it was going to be a foul. I also thought... Just out was, of bounds, I, I think. Thought it is out of bounds. I thought it was off the head of Chris yeah, Nelson, however. What, I thought that should have been maybe the same saying. ball. They set it up. They're trying to get it to right ponder. No. Nelson gives back. Ingram, a three. In and out, no good. And nice. a strong board by Sullivan. 19 points, seven rebounds for Malia Sullivan. And now to the basket and drawing a foul is Gina Briley. Briley will go to the line, and she's a 70% shooter on the season. Briarly has yet to score in this game, has missed all three of her field goal attempts. This is her first free throw attempt of the game. 40-30 with 5.04 left here in the third. Free throw good. Briarly a lefty. Spins the ball in her hands. Makes them both. It's an eight-point game. Chris Nelson looks to the bench and sees Tom Jesse make the call. Double high post this time with Sullivan and Bright Ponder. Sullivan kicks to Nelson. Nelson thought about a three a couple of times. <laughs> they go into Wright Ponder. And she put it up too strong. Ulrich the rebound. We're seeing again what we've seen a lot of teams do. As soon as Wright Ponder catches the ball, they come down with a double team. At least a double team, yeah. Yep. 
the right ponder maybe has to be a little bit more aware that somebody else is open. And somebody else is coming. You know, they, yeah. she can feel the pressure, obviously. We have timeout on the floor here under five minutes. Left here in the third. It's 40-32, Tampa leading St. Leo. 19 points for Sullivan to go with seven rebounds and 10 rebounds for Wright Ponder to go with six points. Eight rebounds, eight points, four assists for Abney. Again, she's headed towards a double-double perhaps. Even a triple-double not out of the question. And she is blindfolded. She just made it. She made the free throw. She made the free throw. Blindfolded. blindfolded. She made a free throw. They better get her out there for the uh, second half. I was going to say, give her a jersey. People often said that's how I played. Yeah. But she made it. That was amazing. I think she, I think she wins a new car, doesn't she? I think that's at the minimum. I'm pretty do sure. Do that blindfold? I, well, you know, you maybe I'd do that from half court. Oh, okay. That would be an interesting promotion, actually. Half court blindfold. blindfold. You have no idea how hard to throw it, where the basket is, and and, and to add a little element of, of uh, danger to it. Spin you spin around. Spin her around first. Then you don't even know which way you're Yeah, shooting. you don't even have any idea. <laughs> that would be awesome. Throw it 10 rows up. Inbounded by St. Leo here. And bring it out on top to Alex Button. Gives to Briarly. She drives all the way to the basket. A great move, but Wright Ponder gets the rebound. Her 11th board. She blew right by Julia Ingram that time and just did not finish. Great move. Abney spins to the right, puts it up too hard. Wright Ponder the rebound. She put it up too hard, and finally the rebound pulled in, pulled in by O'Shaughnessy, the freshman. A three-point shot here by Button is good. She can shoot it. She's the best three-point shooter on the team. That's her 42nd make of the season. She shoots 47% from beyond the arc. That's her first attempt of the day. Strong move. No whistle. Right Ponder misses the putback. Boy, she's missed a couple easy ones. And at the other end, it's a quick basket, and Tom Jesse says that's not the way we want things to go. Casey O'Shaughnessy scoring on the fast break, and it's a three-point game. Tom Jesse's talking with one of the officials, saying that he thought there I think was right body. Ponder got pushed a little bit. Body contact, perhaps, but be careful. Being Mr. a little Jesse. local. Yeah. The other thing, happy. though, those are pretty easy shots. Right Ponder needs to knock a few, a yeah. higher percentage of those down. She's one of the strongest players in the league. A little bump should not should have, no. uh, have made that much of an impact. Anyway, with 341 left here in the third, St. Leo has come back strong, outscoring the Spartans 15 to 6 so far in the quarter. The Spartans have made just one of their last eight from the floor. In fact, they've missed their last five. 7 0 run over the last minute 20 for St. Leo. The Lions coming back strong again on Saturday at Nova Southeastern, where it's tough to play. They beat the Sharks 82-72. That after they lost 67-65 to Florida Southern on Wednesday. And again, they've had Embry-Riddle, Barry, Florida Tech, and Nova Southeastern victories over their last six games. So again, that record, 10-11 and 11 overall and 6-7 and seven in the conference is, it's a little bit deceiving because they've lost a couple overtime games and had a, had one where they lost at the, shot at the buzzer. This is a team that's showing a lot of ability to battle back. And it's a young team, which Crescido likes where this team could be in the future as well as now. Sullivan, right elbow, lost the ball. The crossover stripped by Briarly. Another turnover, the ninth for the Spartans in a hurry. It is no good, but there on the rebound is Gallagher that's scores a and a chance to tie the game with 317 left in the third. Nice comeback by St. Leo. 14-point difference earlier in the quarter. Yeah, earlier in the third at the 9.03 mark, it was 36 to 22. That, folks, is a 17 to 4 run. And it could be 18, and we could be tied. No, we're not as Wright Ponder picks up her 14th rebound of the game.
Spartans fortunate to have a one-point lead right now. Sullivan almost traveled. Nelson launches a three. No good. Rebound Briarly. A chance now for the Sharks to take the lead for the first time in the game. Inside, Gallagher spins and oh. does not score, but will go to the line for two as she's fouled by Wright Ponder, who picks up her third. Dory Nodge coming in quickly. I think they're, they're having a little too much of an easy time getting the ball inside. In for Wright Ponder. That's her third, so they... They may need Dory to play some extended minutes here. If she's able. Yeah, if she can do it. Gallagher to shoot two. 57% shooter on the year. So she gets to the line more than anybody. 143 attempts coming into the game. But it's a mixed blessing. <laughs> well, she'll probably make this one. And nothing but net there. We're tied with 245 to play. Welcome to Tampa, everybody. If you're just tuning in, Tampa led by as many as 14 here early in the third quarter. Dory Nudge, scoop pass, dangerous, but did get it to Ingram. Spartans move it to the right side. Abney now drives into the lane, kicks. Sullivan, Bait, free throw line shot. jumper is good. That's clutch. She's got 21, and the Spartans are back on top. Wright Ponder, by the way, has tied her career rebound in one game with 13 boards so far. Sitting now. Inside it goes. I think that's going to be a travel. It yeah. is on Gallagher. Good call. She kind of stumbled as she came to her jump stop. Had a chance to tie the game again, but it is going to be a timeout called by Coach Crescito. Great run by the Lions has made this an interesting game. Coach Jesse talking with us before the game, Jack, told us that looking at St. Leo, you have to be wary because they have five scorers that are on the floor. They are deep. They can drive. They can post up. They can shoot. It creates a lot of problems yep. defensively. So who do you guard? I mean, you got to play them pretty much straight up and not favor one or the other. And that's what St. Leo is doing with Tampa is when Wright Ponder gets it. They double team her, and they're basically saying, I dare you have somebody else do it. Now, the Spartans have yeah. four other players who can do that. Yeah, but. Spartans are very similar. I, it yeah. was funny when Coach Jesse said that to us. I was thinking, I even said to him, well, Coach, you know, you have five you, you players have that can score, too. too. Yeah. Goes, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've seen that, as you said. It's not just Dory Nudge, even though she's the leading scorer and rebounder on this team. But, you know, Wright Ponder was averaging a double-double uh, up, up till around Christmas, I think. Yeah, and then Dory started elevating her averages. She became a little more focused on uh, some of her opportunities. And when she went up a couple, Wright Ponder went down a couple. So it wasn't like Wright Ponder just wasn't uh, scoring as much. She just wasn't having as many opportunities as she had previously. Sullivan leads the way with 21 points for Tampa. Wright Ponder, six points in a career high, tying 13 boards. And eight points, eight rebounds, five assists for Aaliyah Abney. And now cutting from the weak side was Ingram and Dory Nudge, there the was facilitator. The there was the double, uh, double team. And Dory immediately knew someone was going to be open. That was well designed. They could see the double team coming and Coach Jesse and associate head coach Caitlin Mitrick came up with a good one there. And there's nice a nice response. jump shot by O'Shaughnessy. Two point game. And again, cutting <laughs> behind the defense is Ingram and she scores Same again. Play. Finally, they saw her, but it was too late. Well, and they've done it twice. The first time, St. Leo totally unprepared. The yeah. second time, they were looking for it. And the third time, it might be stolen. So yeah. you got to be a little <laughs> cautious if you try it next time. Dan. Correct. Sullivan almost stripped that ball from behind and now spinning to the basket. A beautiful move by Briarly. Well, we're just going back and forth right now. Punches. That's a senior move right there. The four-year starter, Briarly, with a nice job. Two-point game. Here's this time Nudge. they were ready for it. Nudge. 
Goes out to Nelson. Right wing. Back to Nudge. Nudge has the ball stripped away. Hit her knee. And I think it was Ulrich that knocked the ball away. And timeout was called in the backcourt. He was trying to call a timeout, Coach Crescito, when she was being double teamed, and then the ball got free, <laughs> and the official finally granted the timeout. And by that time, Coach Crescito was like, no, I, well, I don't want it now. <laughs> I don't want it now. They still had four seconds for the 10-second yeah. violation. Yeah, they would have been okay. But in any case, it's a timeout. There's still plenty of timeouts left for, for both teams in this game. 24.2 seconds left in the third. Two-point game. Tampa leading by 14 in with about one minute into the second half. And then St. Leo came back and tied it up. They have never led, but they tied it at 40-40 after trailing by as many as 14. Dory Nudge on the floor. Again, did not play last game. Nudge, the redshirt junior from Hungary, played her freshman year at the University of South Florida, Division I basketball. Last year averaged 14.2 points a game, had nine double-doubles, and has had a career high in rebounds, 16 boards, I think, four times, three or four times, including this season. The Run shot, yeah. yeah. Running it down. Running it down. About a half a second differential. They get it inside. Gallagher takes it up, and she is going to be fouled by Nudge. Dory thought there was travel. No whistle that time, but there is a foul and a chance now for Gallagher to give the Lions their first lead. We should mention, we haven't yet, that one of the players, the sixth man on the Lions team, Summer Quigley, is out with the flu today. Right. And uh, she's big a player that is get, getting some time only averages about seven minutes a game but she's kind of become the first off the bench lately the shot got away but it's partially deflected and missed by Abney we've reached the end of the third St. Leo still hasn't led but they are happy as heck to be tied with the team that leads the SSC the Tampa Spartans 46 46 is the score as we head to the final 10 minutes so a 24-12 quarter for St. Leo there. After having uh, Spartans holding on to a pretty good halftime lead. Well, the Spartans shoot just 35% in the quarter. And on the other side, thanks to some transition and easy baskets, the Lions shot 53% in the third quarter, 9 of 17 from the field. And more importantly, after being out-rebounded in the first half, St. Leo outboarded Tampa at least by one, 10 to 9, but they had been out rebounded in the first half, 22 16. Tampa's overall shooting down to 44%, 39% shooting now for St. Leo after that productive third quarter. Ulrich with 13 points leads the way. Gallagher with 12 points and 14 rebounds. Gallagher has tied her career high, which she set Saturday at Nova Southeastern. This is her seventh double-double of the season for Alani Gallagher, the junior, 6'1 junior from New York out of Vestal Senior High School. And the Spartans will have the basketball to start the final period. St. Leo go, drops back to pick him up. Not going to try to pick him up full court here or even half court. <laughs> Tampa's got a play set up, but St. Leo is not going to play along. <laughs> Come out and guard us. Go ahead and run it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, run the play. Maybe it'll still work. The key is just get the ball in bounds. And they do. And here we go. Ten minutes left. Should be fun. Hope you're enjoying it here on the SSC Digital Network. Scott Lynn and Jack Ike bring it to now. You. And Sullivan got it into Nudge. Ball knocked away, however, and Ulrich with a basketball. And again, the Lions with a chance to take the lead. I think this is their third or third fourth time. chance. First two were on free throws. This is the first time where they've actually had a chance to for a field goal. Button drives, scores! The Lions have the lead. Nine and a half minutes to play. Will this, this be the night that the Spartans suffer their first Sunshine State Conference loss of the season? And the ball mm. bounces off the knee 
of Nudge. Bounce pass from Nelson. Just a little bit out of sorts right now, but I've seen, we've seen enough of these games, and I've seen a couple road games where they've been in situations like this. We've seen them trailing by double digits, and they, they seem to have the resolve and the maturity to just hold on and fight back. And Nudge that time just simply did not look like she wanted to bend over to catch right. that bounce pass, and, yeah. and immediately Tom Jesse brought Wright Ponder back in playing with three fouls. Here's Gallagher driving by right ponder and scores. The Lions by four. Chris Nelson, one of the co-captains along with Dory Nudge, brings it up and gives it to Abney. Wheels and deals and yeah, scores. That's Abney. A nice move. Ten points, nine rebounds, five assists for Abney, and the Spartans are back within two. Tell you, between Abney and Sullivan, a couple really athletic players. Tampa has led most of this game, but right now the Lions have the lead. Gallagher kicks it out to Button. Back into Gallagher, working on right ponder. And the shot no good. Great hustle that time. Tampa ball. It is Tampa ball. It's O'Shaughnessy came flying in from the corner to try to corral the offensive rebound. It's off her out of bounds to Tampa. Now the Spartans with a chance to tie or take the lead with 8.20 to play. Nelson initiates the weave. Abney says you can't stop this. We're tied. <laughs> tied at 50. Yes, sir. Good game here in Tampa. It's been a beautiful day, and it's been a fun night of basketball inside the Martinez Athletic Center right near downtown Tampa. Ulrich gives it up. Button dribbles it off her foot, hook. kicks it out of bounds. She was on the move, taking it strong to the hoop, just forgot the basketball. Don't forget, these teams went into overtime up at St. Leo. Tampa was able to prevail, but they were very evenly matched then. They're evenly matched now. Nelson let the ball roll all the way to half court before picking it up. Nelson, Ingram. Ingram not looking to shoot there. It's a zone, so Abney. that might be. Abney, three! Boy, she's come on seven oh. consecutive for Tampa. Abney, just a 27% shooter from beyond the arc, knocks down her 11th three of the season, and that was a huge one. Seven straight for Tampa. They've all belonged to Aaliyah Abney. 15 points for Abney. Missed all of last season after an ACL injury in the offseason prior to. Button thought about a three. Gives it up, driving and shooting. Oh, and, oh a round out. and out, but an offensive rebound by Gallagher. She's got a new career high on rebounds now. Nice move to the basket again, a round and out. And flying in once again. That time, Button got a hand on it. Ahead it goes. Nice. Oh. Abney. Woo. Nice body control there. Aaliyah Abney. Nine straight points for Aaliyah Abney. She was our guest last game, right? It might have been. I think so. <laughs> or Malia was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one Malia. of the two. Yeah, it was and Malia. And a travel. No, it, it maybe a push-off. I think you got it. So 55-50, and a timeout is going to be called. And look at those teammates come out to congratulate Aaliyah Abney, who's now with 17 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists in her 33 minutes of court time. So the last two and a half minutes, St. Leo has been looking for a point. They've been shut off, shut out in this 9-0 Abney run. Aliyah Abney, there was a game earlier this season, just not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago. I can never remember which team. But she came off the bench early in the first quarter and scored, yes. I think it was 15 points in the first half. Yes. Or 13 of her 15 maybe in the first half. But she was the, uh, she was the difference maker in the game. And you can see how that happens. She and Sullivan are very similar in that they can create, they can handle the ball. They're very strong and athletic. Sullivan's 5'11", has a little bit of height advantage there over Abney, who's 5'9". Abney, the redshirt junior from Orlando, didn't play last year, as I mentioned. Averaged just about five points a game in her freshman season and scored a career-high 23 points against Nova Southeastern.
Tampa with the ball. Coach Crescido wanted to get his team kind of calm down and say, hey, let's take care of the ball. Yep. Still a lot of time in this one. Just a two-possession game. Let's keep playing good defense. Hand off to Abney. And she shoots a 17-footer. No good. Rebound by Gallagher, her 16th. Alani Gallagher has come to play tonight for St. Leo. Ulrich backs out, gives it to Briarly. Defended by Ingram. They switch momentarily. Ingram stays with Briarly on the cut. Now here's Gallagher defended by Wright Ponder. Seven to shoot. She puts it up off the glass and in. Wright Ponder did not want to pick up her four. Nope. She did everything she could, kept a strong body and went straight up. And Dory Nudge continues to sit on the bike and work the knee, hoping to come in if needed. Sullivan to the basket. Strong oh, wow. puts it up and in. She's got 23. Boy, she took the bump and didn't bother her. The reigning offensive player of the week in the Sunshine State Conference. After going off for 29 Saturday at Rollins. And that shot is up and no good by Ulrich. Just missed. Nelson will run a little clock now. They begin the weave. Abney hands to Sullivan. No, she does not. She kept the ball on the dribble. Trying to back down Button. Gets into the lane. How did she not travel again? <laughs> That's a pretty fancy move. Coach Crescido is so showing that he wants a traveling call. Did not get it. I did not think she did that no. time. I thought she might have the first time that yeah. she had that stumble move. But the officials, again, have called a very good game, I think. Both sides. 59-52. Tampa back up by seven now. Button for three. Wide to the right. Backboard only. Abney with a rebound. Her tenth. That's her double-double right there. 19 points, 10 boards. Ingram. There was too much time on the shot clock. Otherwise, she might have launched that baby. Sullivan does shoot it shortly thereafter. Came up short. Ulrich. Spin move. Good D. Good D good by so, uh, Ingram, I believe. Ingram says, yeah, I got ball. I yeah. got ball. Well, remember, it's 50-48, and I said, this team's seen these situations before. Close or even big deficits in the second half, and they don't panic. Five-second Five call. Five-second call. They That's just a killer. Keep doing what they do. The only thing they had to do here is tighten up the D a little bit. They make some of the, a couple more shots. They were getting good looks. And coming up to maybe three quarters court, half zone trap perhaps. The Spartans beat the trap. Now a double team. There. Abney gets it to Ingram. They are still continuing to zone in the double team. And here is Nelson now with 15 seconds to shoot. Under four to play. Nelson backs it out. Nelson bounce pass. Sullivan has it knocked away, but takes it to the basket. Strong and is called for a travel that time. The ball was knocked away by one of the defenders, but she regained control and was whistled for the turnover. Her third turn turnover, Sullivan. 13 turnovers for the Spartans. The Lions have 10. Ulrich. Hands to O'Shaughnessy. Now here's Button. 17-footer left side. No good. Well, they've gone cold since it was 50-46. Sullivan. One on four. Yep. That worked. Coach Crescido just shrugged his hands, and he's like, how do you stop that? Coach Crescido's kind of trying to find something that can work here. 3-10 to play, and his team has gone oh, a while. All right, nice score. three. It's good and a timeout call. So that's a big one with 3.06 to play in regulation. 61 55 the score. Again, we talk about depth. Coach Crescido's had more players available to be out there, whereas Tampa and Coach Tom Jesse, he's only played Dory Nudge off the bench tonight. No one else has reached the court. You knew it was going to be a close game, so you're putting your best players out there. Double-doubles already in this game. We have a couple. Gallagher with a team-high 16 points, 16 rebounds, new career high. 
And Ulrich with 16 points. On the Tampa side, Sullivan may have a double-double before this is over. 25 points, 8 rebounds. Abney already has a double-double. 19 points and 10 boards. I believe this is her first career double-double, but I would have to check that. I'm pretty sure. Nelson, they are picking up, extending out there to try to create a turnover. Ingram to Abney. Goes to right, Ponder. Skips it out to Sullivan and scores, and she's fouled. And that is a good call as the defender was sliding to her left, trying to draw a charge, but just could not get there. Yeah, Abney's career high in rebounds is eight, so she's not had a double-double. Well, what a game she's had. 27 points right now. Again, she's the reigning Offensive Player of the Week in the SSC. She's got 28. One off of her career high. Nine-point lead for Tampa. Sullivan's career high rebounds was seven. Gallagher, what a game she's had. Working on right, Ponder puts it up strong. Too strong. Didn't get the spin, didn't get the roll. Another rebound for Abney, her 11th. Tampa will run some clock, leading by nine. Amazing, uh, it was 50-46, nine and a half minutes to go. Spartans were down four, now have a chance to go up double digits. Coming back strong, led by Abney and Sullivan. They've really done a great job. Nelson. Sullivan, and that's going to be a charge. No, oh, body. a blocking foul. Gallagher called. Maybe she was on the line. On she the might strike. have been. Because it looked to me, at least, that she had, uh, had a, her position established. But we could not see whether she was on the line back there. So it's a chance for a three-point play. Sullivan already now with a new career high, 30 points. So she's averaging 29 and a half the last two games. Yeah. Misses the free throw. Ulrich is going to be fouled. Oh, and she took a hard fall. Yeah. Chris Nelson comes right over to her. Ulrich bounces up, and she's okay. She's a gamer. Yeah, that floor like is not forgiving. No. Again, the leading scorer on this team at 14 and a half points a game and 2.9 assists. And Ulrich tonight with 16 points, three assists, and three boards as she shoots a couple here. Moon is going to come in for O'Shaughnessy. 145 remaining. She knocks down the free throw. If it stays as is, we will be joined in the post game by our player of the game, Malia Sullivan. 30 points, eight rebounds, a new career high. And Abney, again, just terrific. I think we interviewed Malia last game. I'm we've talked to her. We've talked to Abney. I think we've talked to everybody who's out there. But it's hard to ignore a career high. Right Ponder with another rebound. Gets to 15. And right Ponder is fouled and will go to the line. Back to that double digit lead now. Right Ponder has a career high in rebounds with 15 in this game. Missed that free throw. Gallagher, another board. She's got 18 rebounds. My goodness. <laughs> Again, the reigning defensive player of the week, Gallagher. She might be in, in line for honors again. Full court pressure. Abney is going to be called. Uh, a foul against her. 
by Brian Brierly. Pretty good defense that time by Brierly. She got there, and I, I thought there might have been an arm extended. Maybe a foul could have been called on Tampa, but instead, to the charity stripe goes Aliyah Abney. Spartans average about 35 rebounds a game, just a touch under. They have 40 today. Abney's first free throw is good. 20 for Abney. Her career high, 23. Santiago, true freshman, coming in for Briarly for this last 73 seconds. 12-point game. Ulrich, 18 points, tops in the game for the Lions. Gives it up. This is Zaitsev. Gives to Ulrich. Long three-pointer here. Nope. Damian Lillard range almost, <laughs> but no good. And Abney's fouled in the backcourt, and she'll go to the line with a chance to equal her career high of 23 points. Well, a great effort by the Lions tonight in coming back from a 14-point third-quarter deficit to tie the game and actually take the lead by four, but then credit where it's due, the Spartans of Tampa trying for their school record 15th consecutive win Look to be in pretty good shape now with 55.8 seconds to go. And you look at the starters, every one of them at 39 minutes, except for Wright Ponder with 8.38. Dory is the only one off the bench with seven minutes. And Abney does tie her career high, so what a great effort there. Actually, I take that back, Wright Ponder, 33 minutes. But everybody else has not come out. Ulrich to the basket, is fouled by Wright Ponder. Hey, she kind of figured there I got this far with three fouls. Let me yeah. take, a, take a swat at this one. Looked pretty clean, but it's a whistle, and Ulrich will go to the line for a chance for a couple. We mentioned her second game of the season. She picked up a double-double with a career-high game in points and rebounds, 30 points, 10 rebounds. So Amanda Ulrich... Certainly could be in the running for freshman of the year in the Sunshine State Conference. Does not get that free throw to go. Again, the team's leading scorer, leading assist maker. So Dory Nudge has come in and played seven minutes. Six of them she spelled right ponder. One of them, the last minute of the first half, she spelled Sullivan. All right, all right. So Abney, Ingram, and Nelson will all get 40 minutes of game today. Right, Ponder will end up with about 35, 34, and Sullivan will end up with 39. Well, Gallagher with 16 points, a career-high 18 rebounds. She's played the whole game for the Lions. Nin uh, 19 points for Ulrich, as I mentioned. Yeah, St. Leo with three players with 38 minutes or more. One, actually four players with 36 minutes or more. Mm. Sullivan, 30 points, eight boards. Abney, 23 points, tying her career high. And S Sullivan was setting a new career high that was just a few days old from last Saturday. 12 rebounds, a new career high for Abney. 16 rebounds, seven points for Wright Ponder. Nelson, three points, four assists. Nudge with two points off the bench. Ingram with six points in this game. Tampa is up to shooting percentage now in the third quarter, or in the sec third and fourth quarters, up to 52%. So this fourth quarter, they're shooting a Lights whole out. lot better, yeah. Matter of fact, I can tell you. Inbound to Nelson. They're trying to foul her. <laughs> they do. And Nelson, the team's leading free throw shooter, at 83%, will go to the line for two. Six team fouls. Spartans are 75% this quarter. 
That's pretty good shooting. Five for six from Abney, four for six from Sullivan. There's your nine for 12. The only ones who have shot this quarter. Right Ponder with a free throw. If we had an extra mic, I'd love to have been able to talk to Abney and Sullivan together. True. Because they have definitely done the job. Nelson to the stripe. Rolls in the first. Nelson, who hit a three for her only other points, makes both free throws. So she'll finish the game with five, it would appear. 15-point lead for Tampa. Ulrich. They zip the ball around, run the offense. Shot up, no good. Ingram the board. I don't think they'll foul. Here's Sullivan. Sullivan will probably back about back out. No, she doesn't. They should turn the shot clock off, yeah. and Tampa should be able to just dribble out the time, and Coach Cusito says, do not foul, and this is going to be your final score. 15-point win for the Spartans, 73-58. to 58. As the final five seconds tick down, the Spartans move to 17-3 and on the season right there. 14-0 in the Sunshine State Conference play. Still undefeated, and they've set a new school record with 15 consecutive victories. Tom Jesse and his team have done a tremendous job. Associate head coach Caitlin Mitrick in her eighth year at UT, and then the graduate assistant, Bell Bistro. They set this team up, got them ready to play, and even though Dory Nudge was limited to just a handful of minutes, seven minutes because of that uh, injured leg that did not prevent her from playing, but she was not her normal self. And got seven minutes on the court, just two points and two rebounds. But a great win for the Spartans at St. Leo, which had won four of its last six games, falls to 10 and 12 overall and six and eight in the Sunshine State Conference play. So the first game went to overtime between these two teams, Tampa winning 72 to 66. And this time around, it is Tampa getting the win by the score of 73 to 58. And joining us is number 24, Malia Sullivan, a new career high. Next game after the career high you got <laughs> on Saturday. Congratulations, 30 points tonight. Thank you, appreciate it. Well, you and Aaliyah were just monsters tonight. Did you kind of look at it going, hey, we got no Dory again? I mean, yeah, and every people stepped up in places that they were supposed to. Knowing that we didn't have Dory, we, we all got, came together as a team and executed very well. How fun is this for you? You, you? I know you've had good moments on the court in your year and a half, basically, with Tampa. But this, you're playing at a high level right now. Yeah. Fun, huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's an experience. It's, my, it's only my second year, so we got plenty more to go. Yeah, you do yeah. indeed. Um, a school record, 15th consecutive victory. Is this something you guys talked about with your teammates at all, or was it just another game? I mean, no. In the beginning, we set goals, and this is one of our goals, to break records. So we accomplished them slowly as a team. We'll see what the outcome is. You guys were up by 14 early in the third quarter. They come back and take a four-point lead. Any nerves at all? No, we just... We, we've been there before, fighting against against adversity. So that, that's, that's exactly what Jack Ike said at that moment. He said, well, they're down four, but they fought from yeah. behind all we've year. We've done it before. So. You have indeed. So right. overall, I mean, I, I just want to ask you one more thing about Aaliyah. We, no we, we couldn't decide between the two of you. If we had another mic, we would do <laughs> both of you as players of the game. She ends up with a career-high 23 points, career-high yeah. 12 rebounds, and five assists. Oh, she was good. on double a triple-double watch there for a while. Uh, she's been playing awesome as well. Super. Super, super well. She's been playing really good for us, and we needed her to step up. So, right. knowing Dory's out, we got a, other players, opportunities knocking. We got to step up. Malia Sullivan, congratulations Thank on you. a great game. Thank great you great. so much. <laughs> All right, that's it from Tampa here for the women's game. Again, the Spartans win the game, shooting 50% from the field overall, 31 of 62. They made two of six from downtown. They out rebound the Lions of St. Leo, 42 to 32. And they do get the win, 73 to 58. For Jack Ike, this is Scott Lynn saying stay with us because in just about a half hour, well, about 25 minutes.